How's everyone doing? Oh, you're all right. It's cold day back again. Right, today's video, as you can see from the title, is going to be about my life of crime, how I came to be involved in crime, who I was associated with, things like that. It's not a bragging video, guys, because like I say, I've been there and done it. Uh, it's just to let a bit of me to you guys, like opening myself up a bit. Uh, any questions or anything um, or any comments, please feel free to drop them um, or ask me questions in the comment section below. Right, so... I wasn't academic in school or anything like that. I first got arrested when I was 12. or I was about 11 or 12. A mate of mine, I give him a quid. We stood out, was in school on our dinner break. Went to the spa in Royton near Oldham in Manchester. Greater Manchester. Um, I said to me, mate, here's a quid. Get us a um, kinder egg. He stole it. Stole the kinder egg. Came out. Fucking pocketed the quid. And then because he passed me the kinder egg, the manager grabbed both of us by the collar. Dragged us back in a shop. We both got nicked. <clears throat> Police came. Took me to my mum's. Since I seen my mum's face, I started attacking my mate in the back of the car, uh, like going at him because my mum was going to beat me bad. I was crying my eyes out, scared of the police. Fast forward a few years. When I was, um, I, I wasn't academic in school, didn't do my exams. My nana died two weeks before my 17th birthday. I joined the army in her memory. God bless her, may she rest in peace. Was kicked out of the army down the line, a few years down the line. Um... From there, I ended up homeless for quite a while. I ended up living in an outside power station in Haywood on Edgerton Street. Um, eventually, um, I got into a hostel. And then from a hostel, I got into a council flat in Rochdale. Um, and then from there, I started I, I, off my own back and stuff. I gained security qualifications, which I paid for myself and stuff. Uh, started working retail security, started working doors. Um, then I came into contact with these Asian kids that live local by, close by, sorry. They was involved in the heroin trade and the uh, crack cocaine. Uh, so I ended up involved with them. First, it started off like a little bit involved. And then when I when I earned my stripes and stuff and showed that, that I was loyal and part of part of crew and that, and I was like worth my weight, um, I became a, like, well, I, I was pretty much running things. Uh, I was bagging it. I was fucking, I was bagging it. I was debt collecting on them. Um, uh, not talking small amounts, guys. Talking kilos and kilos and kilos of fucking class A, man. Of, of the strong fucking, strong purity of fucking heroin and crack, right? Um, massive amounts. Like, for those that don't know, a kilo is like a house brick. Um, you buy it quite pure. You bash it, which means you cut it with a cutting agent. Um, you're one house bricks now, too. So straight away, you've doubled your fucking profits, haven't you? <clears throat> Anyway, uh, I was doing that. I was involved with that, um, with the Asian lads and stuff. Um, like, I was deeply engrossed in it. Eventually came away from that, ended up working the doors in... I worked all over Oldham, worked in Manchester City Centre. Ended up working in Ashton. I became the doorman in a place in Ashton, right? In a place... Let Ashton underline, yeah? <clears throat> is in Tameside. Tameside's a naughty little area. You got Drawlsden, you got Clayton, you got Ashton... You've got Duckinfield, Staley Bridge, yeah. Or Staley Vegas, as it's known. Naughty little areas, you know what I mean? I was jumping backwards and forwards. I was working in Staley Bridge, and then I got offered this door, right, as he had doorman. Um, I got a place called Legends in Ashton, right? Like I say, naughty little area. Um, and at the time, yeah, it was banging, yeah, it was thriving, yeah. I used, Legends play, like, wig and pay music, yeah. So the club was well associated with drugs. Everyone was off the fucking nut, whether it be ecstasy, cocaine, and everything else. Um, when I first took over the door there, yeah, like it was the company still had the door from like previous. I just got places they had dorm in there, and I got told these kids in the corner, yeah, it was all like mixed race, white guys, black guys, yeah, it, all in trackies and that. So I thought, right, I've got to have a like. I got told these were the West End boys, right? The West End is a place in Ashton, right? But it, it played out to be a lot bigger than what it was. Down the line, I'll explain that. So yeah, I ended up saying to these lads, like gang lads, I ended up saying, listen. Um, I said, you got. I said, you're gonna, you guys are gonna have to leave after eight o'clock, nine o'clock. I said, you guys are gonna have to go out, get some jeans on, some shoes, and come back. Um, I said that's just from the management and stuff, right? I wasn't a dickhead with them because I wasn't a bully with my job. Whether I was someone six stone went through or they're as big as I was, right? I spoke to people with respect. That's the way. I've been the pissed up person that I'm dealing with, so I had that attitude when I was doing the door and when I spoke to people. Like I say, not a bully, just spoke to people. As people, simple. Um, so anyway, these gang lads had a bit of fucking... And we clashed heads a few times, right? But they did it. They ended up going. I, I give them the respect, which is like, you've got to give respect, yeah, to get respect. 
did that. They ended up going away, putting the jeans on, shoes, come back, doing what he was doing, yeah. I, I then was clued up, yeah, that they were selling drugs in the club. <clears throat> and at this point, I thought, listen, I, I'm standing here getting paid £10, £12 an hour. I think I was on some at 10 or £12 an hour. And I thought, you know what, fuck this, right? So I said to the lads, I said to the gang lads, I said, listen, who's in charge of your, you lot? And I, he said, this kid, we don't do names on this channel. I said, this kid. So I was like, right. So I took him to one side. Yeah. I said, listen, right, you guys can sell your drugs in the club officially, exclusively, right? I'll search people that are coming in. I'll take drugs off them. I'll sell them to you at half a price of for a gram. So if it was cocaine, for example, I'd sell it to them at 20 quid. They can bang it out at 40. They're doubling their profits. I'm making money. They're making money. And I wanted money from them on top for them exclusively dealing drugs in the club. And then if the police ever came, I'd give them an heads up and stuff. Uh, we came to an agreement. They used to they used to give me backhanders. I'd take drugs off people. I'd sell the drugs to the lads, to the gang. The gang would sell the drugs back to the people that I'd taken them from. It was just, that's just the way it was. It swings and roundabouts, right? I was winning. They was winning. Everyone was winning. People were often not on drugs. They was earning money. I was earning money. The sweet, right? It was understanding. Um, the owner of the club liked the way that I dealt with the gangs because, with this gang, because, like I say, it kept trouble away from the door. Um, then one night, one of the, it kicked off, right, outside. Um, there was only two of the gang lads there at the time. And it was about three or four guys, yeah. And me and me mate on the door, like we backed the gang up. Yeah, there was only, like I said, there was only two members. Yeah, and fucking, I end up, I end up smashing some guy. Yeah, and as he fell, I gripped him in a choke. He was out anyway when I hit him, and I grabbed him in a choke hold and stuff. And the gang member there, like he's fucking, he's got a dust star. He's smashing the kid in the face. He was already out. <clears throat> there was two of them knocked out. One of them got on his toes, and the other one didn't want to know. Yeah, so we dealt with the situation. Yeah, simple as that. Um. Then next thing we hear, fucking pure sirens everywhere. We're thinking, oh shit, here we go, we're getting nicked, yeah. So we all we all got we all fucking opted inside the club. And then one of the gang lads, this is where I knew it was serious, yeah. Like where it was I'm from Manchester, I wear a bulletproof vest on the door when I was doing the doors, and I know the script, yeah, but the guy's like, Look, I've got a strap. For those that don't know, a strap's a shooter, firearm, one of them. So yeah, so I ended up I ended up getting rid of the shooter. I ended up out of the back, yeah, and I, I got rid of the shooter for him. <clears throat> um, I was gloved up anyway, so it was sweet. I actually found out that these gang were a notorious gang in Manchester, right? And then I ended up running with them. Um, a week or so after that, we got invited to a barbecue. I went to a barbecue with the boys and stuff. And like I say, um, yeah, I ended up dealing drugs with them on the door and stuff. I was moving coke up for them on the door. I was in like, um, that was it. I was just, I became involved with them that way. I ended up running with them that way. Um, yeah. Anyway, they all ended up going to prison uh, between 11 of them for 235 years. Um, and, and that was the end of that chapter. Um, I carried on doing the doors. I ended up taking over my own door and then I became in contact with uh, a gangster from Manchester. Uh, ended up running with him and was loyal to him for five years, six years. Um, and I ended up running with him. And fucking hell, through it, I, became, I, was, on a, I was on a gangster documentary. I'm not a gangster, I don't proclaim to be a gangster, nothing like that. I'm just a big fucking lad that worked the doors and everything else. And But I was loyal, right? I pride myself on my loyalty. To me, to some people, yeah, loyalty is just a word, right? But to me, it, it, it's more than a word, it's a way of life. Um, and my loyalty took me to prison um, when I was arrested stupid amounts of times. Um, I kept my mouth shut. Uh, I was I was raided. I was um, my house was raided by the armed police uh, numerous times and stuff like that. Um, then there was another notorious criminal that was on the run, and the police thought he was at mine and kicked my door through and stuff. And it was crazy shit, man. Like big, big armed police helicopter, armed police, all that sort of stuff. I was in deep. Uh, in the eyes of the police, I'll never say this, but in the eyes of the police, um, they believed that I was a minder for this gangster. Uh, not something I'd ever say. I don't. I don't. I'd never say that. I was a loyal friend to him, but like I say, in the eyes of the police, I was his mind. Uh, I was his right arm. Um, so yeah, that's the way that was. Um, like I say, my loyalty took me to prison and stuff. You keep your mouth shut when you're arrested. Uh, me, but I was arrested on um, a witness intimidation charge, right? Um, 
the police were saying that there was four or five calls made to a to a, a family that we used to be friends with that had now become police informers, right? Um, based up in Old Trafford, Stretford, yeah. And what they said was that, like, oh, we'd rang them and threatened them and stuff. And the coppers were like, listen, if you tell us who's made these phone calls, yeah, you won't go to jail. You can walk, right? We'd have to, like, you know what I mean? We'll let you go through the net, right? Listen, I'm not no grass, right? Yeah, man. I kept my mouth shut. I dropped a prepared statement where I denied the allegation against me because I was alleged to have made one of the telephone calls. I denied the allegation. I went no comment through on my interview, and that's the way it played out. Because I went no comment, the police saw fit to charge me with no evidence at all with witness intimidation. This is why this is part of the reason I do these fucking videos because the police are corrupt, yeah? With no evidence at all because I never fucking did anything wrong, right? The, the, I was supposed to have made a call from a telephone box for 20 seconds to a fake Irish accent, right? With no corroborating evidence at all. No, the, the telephone box was forensically examined, DNA forensically linked. Nothing came back to me because it wasn't... There was CCTV. There was nothing that tied me to it. Yet, I still ended up in prison because the police saw fit to fuck me off, right? It was a holding charge. People think, well, you can't go to prison with no charges, with no evidence. Yes, you can. There's a little thing called holding charges. So that was it. I was slung in prison. Um... That was that that was by the by eventually i got out on a bail application um and then the police because i, I was out then the police just dropped the charges it's fucking ruthless man simple as that through being loyal to the person i was loyal to um i became friends with notorious infamous prisoners uh we don't do names um cockney gangsters i had when i was on this documentary that was on the crown investigation channel um I got fucking we because of my loyal lot my loyalty to the person that I was involved with, um, which was like I say it wasn't some people's loyalties up for sale and stuff and every man's got his price not me I give you loyalty you only get from a dog it's as simple as that um, I, I'm no longer in touch with the person that I was loyal to um, not through my fault or anything like that um, it, we just yeah we just grew apart and stuff and like I say I'm not not going to go into that in this channel but we went our different ways i wish him the best and everything i still look out for him on like in the news and stuff like that because he's currently in prison um my thoughts and my prayers are with him and i wish him all the best for the future that's just the way i am um but through that through the documentary um took me to the birmingham uh, birmingham city university to the criminology department where the person i was involved with did a speech to the students um and it, it's just crazy you know what i mean like I've seen some crazy shit and I've been involved in some crazy shit and like I say I've done my own crazy stuff off my own back um, I've been involved and linked with some of the most dangerous people in the country um, down to terrorist people that hold like certain views on certain terrorist organisations um, I'm a former British Army soldier I was involved with this people that had these views and stuff which was quite crazy you wouldn't come across that in any other world but the criminal underworld um and like i say in the eyes of the police i was a minder in a in the criminal underworld which the criminal underworld is a very dirty murky fucking world to be honest there's, there's a lot of paranoia there's a lot of snakes in the grass um there's some decent there's some very very decent people and these like i said i've been involved with gangs right and i've been involved with gangsters right and the, the the clasp in the gulf of classes between the gangs and the gangsters is chalk and cheese even when i was on my in, my, in prison on my last stretch and stuff <clears throat> i ended up becoming friends with people that were in a rival gang to the gang that i was running with in prison and we're up on murder charges and stuff which is still it's ongoing now um but we just clicked I, i'm one of them people you either like me you love me or you fucking hate me um I don't really have enemies because of the way that I live my life. Uh, like I say, I'm loyal to people. I don't stab people in the back. Um, and yeah, like I say, that that's just the way that it goes. I've earned money. I've fucking, I've lost door contracts. I lost security contracts because of the person that I was involved with and stuff. Um, the police hounded us. Like I was fucking out. I came home to having me fucking pad raided by armed police. The, the next, the, the same night, right, that I came home, they fucking, they came to my club. There was no one in, there was about four people in the club, right, and they fucking, they raided us, right, and searched us on the door and all this sort of bollocks. It was just, um, but 
being on this documentary that I was on, I was stupid because what it did, it, it painted a bullseye on my chest, right? And like I say, I do these interviews and stuff like that because I'm I'm anti-establishment, I'm anti-police. Um, I've got a story to tell. It's a very interesting story, to be honest. Like I say, I, I'm just grazing, I'm just I'm I'm just touching base with things along the way here. Um, but that's just the way that I was in. That's just the life that I was living. Um, I'm no longer involved in that world. Like I say, I now do interviews with the media on things I've got experiences on and stuff. Um, speaking out for prisoners, speaking out for prisoners' rights, and showing the system, the Ministry of Justice, especially for what it is. Um, I do interviews, like I say, on, on things I've got experience of. I'm available for interviews. Um, if you, I'm available for, for for students and stuff. If students are doing something on crime or they need opinions on crime or things like that, because I've been there, I've lived it, I've done it, and I've experienced it. I've been in prison, I've been homeless, and fucking everything else in between, right? Um, that's why I, I make myself available to people. Um, like I say, the, the, do you know what? The, the, mo the people that buy all these crime, docu watch these crime documentaries and buy these crime books and stuff and these autobiographies by gangsters and criminals and hard men and stuff. Do you know who it is? It's actually people that work in law, police officers, solicitors, the Crown Prosecution Service, things like that. They're the ones that hold the biggest interest within crime because they're trying to understand how the criminal mind works and stuff and everything in between going back from the from the craze to, to the quality street gang in manchester to the gangs going up to obviously the gangsters on a on a local national fucking international worldwide basis and stuff it's as simple as that right guys listen i've waffled on for long enough that was my that was touching base with my world of crime and stuff hope you liked it like follow subscribe comment below speak to you all soon